All right, I'm gonna show you how to change the thermostat on this 2006 Corolla XRS. I believe it's in the same location for the regular Corollas with the one ZZ motor. This has the two ZZ motor and the six speed manual. Uh, all right, so it's kind of a bitch to get to. And it's actually gonna be down here under your alternator. All right, it's generally recommended if you're doing any work under the hood to disconnect your battery and for safety's sake and what have you. And depending on what you're working on, it is actually required. Like if we're gonna take this alternator off, then the ground wire here is gonna spark with the battery connected. And so uh, I'm gonna try to do it without removing the alternator. So at the moment, I'm gonna leave the battery connected, but uh, generally they will advise you to disconnect your battery regardless. Okay, so we're gonna have to disconnect this fan to get it out. So right there's your coupler, and then looks like there's two spots, one there, and one here where it's clipped in, and we're gonna have to get those clips out. All right, so it's hard to see what you're doing down here, but this one, your main coupler here, you're gonna have to push this tab on the top part, and it'll slide off. You can't really see that from up here. These are like that, so you got these little side tabs you have to push in so you can pull it out. Um, this has a short ram intake, so some of your stock airbox, if you have the stock airbox, may be in the way. You have to remove some of that shit, but I'm, I'm not sure because uh, we don't have that on here. So, then there should be, so there's a mounting bolt right there. Looks like about a 12 or a half. I think there's just the one there. And then there should be one right there. And then at the bottom, it just sits in this notch here. And it should just pop out like that. So we're actually missing the bolt here. So you have the mounting bolt on each side at the top. And then this thing will pull out. But first, uh, well, let me start there. Really help if you can hit that with some PB Blaster first. And let it sit for a few minutes, which I'm about to do. Well, on the side of it, you got your bolt that comes in <laughs> like this. And then on the back, there is a uh, nut that goes around it that's square. And that nut will send it, sit there and spin inside the plastic and blow the plastic out. So what you need to do is get a little short flathead like this down in there. And you wedge it under that nut. That way the nut doesn't spin with the bolt, and hopefully you can get it removed. Um, my experience has been that, well, you get lucky on some of them, and some of them will sit there and spin, and if it sits there and spins and you can't get it off, you're pretty screwed, so at that point, you'd be looking at taking the whole radiator out with this attached, but I'm trying not to do that. All right, so I got lucky and I shoved the screwdriver in there, like I said, and I got the bolt out. Now that uh, nut is gonna be left in there. Here, there it is. Anyways, it's just sitting there. So I need to use my magnet to get it out to make sure that it doesn't fall out and we lose it. This stupid little thing. So that goes on there like that. And that's why you need to take your flathead. It's going to have to be a short one so it'll fit. And you just got to shove it under the edge of that square nut so that it doesn't spin with the bolt as you try to take it out. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and spin. Next, we need to take these 10 millimeters out so that... Well, that was a 10 millimeter too, by the way. That way I can pull this pipe up and out of the way. All right. So now we can move that out of the way. This line is just like an overflow with the cap, so it's fine leaving that on there. This is the only line that's still attached, clear down in there. So we're just gonna pop it off right there. Then I believe that's all that's holding it in there. Should be able to pull it out. This is gonna get in the way here, but I'm gonna need two hands to do this, but it should come out fairly easy. All right, there it is. Took me about 10 seconds to get it out. Just getting caught up right here, like I said, but yep, it came out fairly easily. 
So now everything's out. Got a lot more room to get in here. Now your thermostat is under that housing right there that that pipe goes to. So basically you need to take that off and then you can get to your thermostat. So now that I have more room, I can actually get my arm down in here. I don't have to crawl under the car. I can see what I'm doing from up top. So now we just need to pop this hose off. So you're going to want to drain your coolant now, or you could have done it in the first place, but I haven't done it yet. So we need to drain our coolant because when we pull this hose off, uh, coolant's going to come out. Okay, so it's actually down here on this side. Usually they're on the other side. <sighs> right there. And you just turn it like that until it's open enough that it'll start pouring out. <sighs> So when you drain this, you just want to pop your radiator cap off. That way it doesn't hold a vacuum and it'll let it come out. Yeah, my container under there. It's giving me hell trying to get this pipe off. I managed to get that hose clamp wiggled down with this. Alright, well that thing is stuck on there. I'm not sure if it's an advantage or disadvantage to remove the alternator because I'm trying everything to pry that bitch off there and it's like fused onto that metal. I'm gonna unplug these to get it out of the way so I don't bust the wires. So this one just little tab on the top, push down, pull it out. And uh this one's you push on the back to lift it up off. Alright, so I think I'm gonna get it here. I'm just using various points of the alternator to pry on it like that. I'm just going to work my way around it, and I've been hitting it from the bottom too. You get it loosened up all the way around, and it should pop off. All right, there you go. That's almost off there. Just need something really big to pry against. So leaving this alternator on here is definitely helping because I'm pushing it against the alternator to pry that off. All right, I finally got her off. So I'm actually going to stick the phone up there and see if maybe we can see what kind of bolts and shit are up there. Alright, there's one. And then your other one. Right there. Alright, so here's the problem with this. Right now, I have my socket and extension. It's a 10 millimeter, by the way. On the top mounting bolt for that cover. So that one's fine. The bottom one... And get this shit out of the way. All right, you see the bottom one there? This AC line is in the way. Joint, swivel joint, pivot joint, whatever the hell you want to call these things. So it works like that. So you have room to get a ratchet on it. And it'll throw you off center, so you just want to make sure you press against that. And hold it nice and tight against the bolt. That way you don't round off the head. Alright, so that's the nut. I had it all the way off and it was just sitting there, kind of, thankfully. So I just stretched in with my magnet and pulled it off so you don't lose it. That's one thing you want to be careful. You drop that thing down in there and never find it. You'll be sh... Fuck. Yeah. Now I gotta get the... The pain in the ass one on the bottom. So check this shit out. There's your last nut. Okay? Bolt, whatever. It was a nut. This is a quarter inch drive socket, 10 millimeter. As you can see, it's touching the side of the alternator bracket there. So, unless you have some very strong quarter inch drive joints, you're gonna, you're gonna have to take the alternator out because you're gonna break the damn joint and try to get that out. I'm still trying to decide if I want to try or not. I'm almost positive I'm going to break the joint and I really don't want to do that because they're brand new, but... Alright, so I got lucky. It wasn't as tight as I thought it would be. And I got this thing loose. So, you may or may not break your quarter inch swivel drive. It actually wasn't that bad. 
it could have been a lot tighter and I still could have got it out. So hopefully yours isn't like fucking welded on there. And so, so far, should be able to do this without taking the alternator off. Okay, so now this thing should pop off. It's probably gonna be a little stuck. So there's that goddamn thing. Sorry, but this is becoming a real pain in the ass. Alright. So there's your thermostat. Pop that fucker out. Alright, so that fucker was really stuck in there. So I'd use my multi tool there, squeezing down on it hard as shit to pull it out. Pain in the ass. Alternator's still on. So, again, that was so fucking stuck in there. I was like, oh! I finally got it out. Cut my arm on the fucking radiator on the way out. So, you might have to take the alternator off to get this bitch out. Jesus. So I just grabbed it with these fuckers and yanked it out. Anyways, there's your shitty thermostat. Okay, there's the new one. It's quite common for them to look different. We need to get this new gasket around it. Okay, that was a lot easier than most I've done. It's easy as shit, really. So there's just a, damn it, slit in the middle of this there, see? So you stick the edge of that in there. This one was actually really easy. <sighs> one thing I want to point out before it gets too dark, see that? Don't fuck up your radiator like I did. You kind of forget about it when you're cramming yourself in here trying to get to this, and it's like, nah, fucking up your radiator the whole time, so... Now I gotta make sure I don't have a leak out when I'm done. But it should be fine because it's just the fins. Alright, new one installed. Now it's just sitting there loose. So you wanna be careful. First of all, make sure you got it set in there nice and flush all the way around, all that good shit. But when you put your cap back on, you gotta be careful. Uh, make sure you don't bump it and get it loose so you gotta make sure that thing is still installed correctly when you go to bolt this down so now I gotta put this over top of it okay caps back on made sure my thermostat didn't move that was kind of a bitch to get lined up on those pins now I gotta put my nuts back on and tighten them down so I got one back on about the only way to get these back on is uh, a little make sure it's not gonna tip out and such. Those luckily stay in there pretty good, but yours might be loose and wanna just fall right out the end, but be careful and then gently just get back down in there, get it set over and spin it on. All right, got them back on there. Snug them down, but not real, real tight because this is very small. I'd say about 10 foot pounds of torque, 9 or 10 foot pounds, you'd be good to go. And then we gotta fill it back up with coolant, but we're gonna have to uh, burp the system, make sure there's no air bubbles in it so it doesn't overheat. So we're gonna have to fill it up and watch it and make sure we get all the air out of the system. Alright, so there's the hose. Now these kinds of hose clamps are a real bitch to get back on. You barely get them off in the first place. So you can either do like I did and wipe a little oil on it to help slide the fucker up to where it needs to be. Or you can just replace it with one of the screw type hose clamps. Okay, everything's back on except for the radiator cap. I'll tell you why in a second. Got the alternator plugged back in. 
Got the cooling pans plugged back in, the clips put back in the plastic, so we don't have to worry about the wire getting cut by the fans. Got everything clipped back in down here. I got a bolt back in here with that stupid little square nut on the back, so I had to again stick that in there and stick the little short flathead under it so I could get it tightened down. Got this front hose bolted back down to the core support. So everything's back on, ready to go. So what you're going to do, you're going to fill this with coolant. <clears throat> oh, also, drain plug is back in tight. So what you're going to do is fill this with coolant to the top. Then you're going to run the car with the heat on high. And as it's running, with the cap off, you're going to watch the level here. And as it goes down, you're going to keep topping it off until it quits taking coolant. And we also have some coolant here in the overflow as well. And while you're doing that, you just want to keep an eye on the temperature. Make sure nothing goes on. No air bubbles getting trapped or anything like that. Uh, causing your car to overheat. So I keep going back and forth, filling it with the cap off as it runs. Go back in, keep an eye on temp, make sure everything's good. Come back out, see if you need to add more. Just basically do it until it stops taking coolant and keep an eye on the temperature the whole time. So gurgling's normal, it's getting the air out. So you hear it start doing that. Stop, let it bubble, add some more, stop. Basically just till it's full. Okay, I made a mess everywhere. See it's full there. So now we're gonna start it up. You're just gonna watch, see if it takes any. Oh shit, it's gonna come out. Should start taking some. <laughs> There's air trying to come out. Okay, the reason this is pouring out is because air is pushing up and trying to come up out. This is normal. It may or may not do this. I've seen it. See, there's an air bubble. I've seen a few coming out, so that's why it's pushing the fluid up and it's coming out here. There's another one. Come on, give me one more. Now, don't get too close to this because it, it could shoot up out at you. There's another little one. Periodically come around check your temperature. It looks like it's starting to come up a little so basically Once this warms up enough that thermostat is going to start opening and then it'll start pulling coolant into the motor At which point the level on this should start going down and then you'll have to add a little more Until it's full and you get all the air worked out of the system Now if at any point your car starts getting too hot you want to shut it off immediately don't let it overheat and typically you'll have more air come out and you just basically wait a little bit and just keep trying to burp the system and get the air out so right now I'm waiting for the thermostat to open and start taking this coolant down into the motor so my temp's starting to come up a little and I still don't have any heat yet so there's probably air in the system so the coolant hasn't made it to the heater core yet to give us heat so I'm going to keep an eye on this now, it's starting to go up. And that thermos that should start opening, letting the coolant through, and then push it through the heater core so we'll get heat and hopefully push all the air out of the line. I think we got a big bubble stuck in there. There it goes, it just went. All of a sudden it just dropped down. So some air came out of the system, there was air pushing that up, which is why it was leaking out the whole time. Whatever air was in there, there might be more, but it got out. 
all of a sudden the, the level dropped, big bubble came out, and right now we sit here. I'm gonna go check the temperature again. It's moving a little. There you go, it's starting to move. Oh, here comes some here comes some air. There Yeah, there's still air in it. Be careful while you're doing this. Don't get shot in the face with this. It can suddenly shoot out. There goes a big bunch. See, that's what you're going to be dealing with. Now, while this is occurring, you need to keep going back and forth to make sure that you're not going to overheat. Right now, we're still okay. Yeah, it's being a real pain in the ass. It just went down. Oh, it went all the way down. Look at that. So now I can finally add some more. So I just added more. A bunch more air coming out. Spilling shit all over the place. Hopefully it'll have a big bubble again and it'll drop back down. Meanwhile, the temperature is fine, but I have no heat. Come on, do it. There it goes. Fuck, I missed it. Well, I didn't even add any. I came back over here and it, it came all the way back up to the top on its own. Much more air came back out and then it dropped back down again. It looks like it's trying to do it again. There it goes. Yep, see? Got a bunch of air in there, it's still working its way out. This is what you're gonna have to fucking deal with. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing for a little while and watch the temp. No more shit comes out, then I'm gonna start adding again. Uh, just came back over from checking the temp and it's all the way up again didn't even add nothing so I just got to watch it for a little while it's got a lot of air in there it's getting out it stops doing this for I don't know four or five minutes then I might actually add something it keeps going up and down back and forth so as I sit here and wait forever for it to stop bubbling a fucking light just fell if you pour the coolant in slowly with a little funnel that fits down in there and just add it very slowly, it will help reduce the amount of bubbles and hell that it's going to give you like I'm doing right now. If you just pour it in fast as shit, you're going to create more air bubbles that you're going to be waiting forever to get out like I am. So try to use a little funnel and pour it in nice and slow. Alright, this helped a lot. been doing that <sighs> finally got some heat now gauge is a little high I'm still working the bubbles out I'll sit there and hold reps for a while like that and then it would start bubbling up drop down repeat it's just taking some time gauge is a little high there I'm watching it I seen it get up there and then drop back down Still got air in the system, I'm trying to get out.
I've shut it off a couple times too, and sometimes I heard some bubbles coming out when it was shut off. Uh, this is why it's important to watch your gauge. All right, I think I finally got it. I've been out this for like an hour. I uh, shut the car off and let it set for about five minutes. Every time I shut it off, I could hear it gurgling and shit, so. I shut it off a few times and let it set for a few minutes. Slowly poured in more. Here, it start bubbling, stop pouring, wait till it stop bubbling, add more. Did that a couple times. Shut it off, let it set for a few minutes, go back at it, add some before you restart it. Slowly. Started up, a little bit of bubbles were coming out. I sat there and held revs under the hood. A bunch of bubbles started coming out. It's just taking forever. But now I have heat. I'm gonna go take it down the road and back. I'm gonna be cautious to make sure we don't overheat. There could still be air in the system, but I'm gonna go take it for a spin and see how it does. All right, it's all done. Took way longer than it should have. My advice poured in very slowly. I've been fucking with it for like an hour. But finally done. Seemed like shutting the car off and letting it set for a few minutes. And then adding it slowly helped a lot. After I did that once or twice, then it finally filled up. So having to sit there and hold some revs under the hood and it would start bubbling up. But, finally got it good to go. Just be patient, you know, last thing you want is to overheat it.